Welcome to Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. I've been meaning to play this game for quite a few years. I've seen it on many lists of the best survival horror games ever made, which is what made me curious about it in the first place. But I haven't recorded it since it only came out on the GameCube. But I finally just bit the bullet, looked into using an emulator for it, and it turns out there's a very good emulator for the GameCube called Dolphin, which I'm using to play this. So let's jump right into it. Flesh. Bone. Bound together with the oddest magical incantation. This wretched book is where it all began so long ago. Before time. Before humanity. I am Dr. Edward Roivas. I am a clinical psychologist. I am also dead. This is not my story, nor even the story of the Roivas family. It is the story of humanity. Like it or not, believe it or not, as you will. Your perceptions will not change reality, but simply color it. Humanity has been on the edge of extinction for two millennia. Ignorant of so much, and dependent on so few. The Guardians grow restless. Their time once again near. Whether by fate or misfortune, my family has crossed their path, and they didn't take kindly to it. Their attention turns to my granddaughter, for she is the last of my line, and the last hope for humanity. I don't think that's supposed to be purple. Okay, so I play through this just testing the game. I think I don't know how the combat works, but it's like a little pre-log, prolog thing. Not sure what to do other than just like mash A and shoot them. Uh oh, I'm out of ammo. I don't know if I have more ammo before I can even reload. Yeah, I think you're supposed to kind of fail that. Alexandra Roivas. Um, yeah, who's this? This is Inspector Legrasse of the Rhode Island Police. I'm sorry to disturb you, but there's been an accident with your grandfather. I'll be on the next flight out. I remember this conversation with this police officer or detective or whatever being absolutely hilariously bizarre. I haven't played this before, by the way, just this opening bit I played. Ah, Miss Roivas, I'm pleased to meet you. I trust you had a pleasant trip? Um, yes, I suppose so, considering. Yes, my condolences. This is most unpleasant. It's a shame we couldn't meet under brighter circumstances. Yes, it is. Can we get this over with, please? Of course. Uh, this way. But I must warn you, it's not a pleasant sight. I'm afraid there's not much to see. Miss Roivas, is that your grandfather, Edward? Yes, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. I don't understand. Why are you showing me this? Yeah, you check yes, why, records or something? yes, why are you showing her this? I'm... I'm sorry. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative, and no, we can't check dental records. There's no head. No, none of this makes sense. There's no sign of intrusion, and there was certainly a lot of force used here. 
I have never seen anything like this in my 20 years on the force. We have no evidence except for the body, and what's left doesn't say much. Ugh, we don't have a single clue. He is such an incompetent you asshole. find out who did this. I'm not leaving Rhode Island until you do. There must be some clue in this old mansion revealing what happened. I want answers. So do I. I wish I had some. I'm sorry to talk over the cutscene like that, but it's just too ridiculous. <laughs> Shocked by her grandfather's mysterious death and frustrated at the incompetence of the local police, indeed, Alex vows to uncover the truth. She decides to search the mansion. The place where Edward conducted his research. If there was a tie to his past, and possibly a tie to his murderer, it would be here. Yeah, so what the fuck is wrong with that cop? Oh my god. She just took the first flight out. Sorry, something happened. Um, here, why don't you come look at this bloody cloth with just a hand flopped out and, oh, it's missing a head. Sorry to show you that. We needed you to identify the body. That's not even how you identify a body. You can't identify a body by saying, hey, I saw the hand. That's my, was it father or grandfather? That's their ring. You don't identify the body by identifying a ring on the body. That's not enough. It, what? It's not even a proper body identification. There's no reason to show her something so traumatic. Like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Ah. <sighs> anyway. Okay. Let's begin. Let's take a look around. Do I have anything on me? Oh, right, that's like the tutorial thing. You had to equip and check and whatnot and blah blah blah. So I've got the second floor key. The key to the second floor of the Roivas mansion. It looks very old and worn. Doesn't look very worn to me. Definitely old, though. They don't make them like that anymore. Skeleton key. Let's take a look around. Beautiful carriage clock. The hands appear to be stuck, yet the clock continues to tick, with the time permanently set to 3.33. There is a key in the back of the clock, presumably for winding it. Should Alex look at the key? Permanently set to 3.33. What if that's a password to something? 3.33. Yeah, take a look at the key. Alex picks up the desk clock and pulls the key from it. However, there is something odd about the key. It isn't for winding it at all. It looks like a dresser key. It's an interesting portrait. It looks demonic. Portraits of, the, portraits of the ancestral Roivos line. The foyer walls. Their faces reveal a dark, brooding edge. There's something about each one that gives the viewer an unsettling feeling. Sunset, I think? Probably sunset, not sunrise. Sunset's much creepier. So it's gotta be. The last weak rays of sunlight fight the shroud of darkness. It lends an eerie feel to the last few weeks' events. As the sun sets, Alex will be alone in his house with nothing but the spirits of old for company. Well, isn't the cop here too? Not that they're very good company. Same description as the other one. Just some old Roivos dude. It's locked. Whoops. <laughs> Accidentally punched the door. Yeah, this seems to be my only attack in this beginning section. Again, I've played for the first few minutes just to kind of familiarize myself with the controls and whatnot. 
you can punch the wall. Or punch the air. And that seems to be about it. Yeah, I noticed some really silly stuff with the animations. Um, like, the punching animation, if you look at her body, it's contorting in such a weird way, isn't it? Like, it doesn't look right. The way her back bends, especially, is just so strange. Also, she has this ridiculous, like, hip wiggle back and forth. It's kind of hard to see here. I'll show you in a different room. But it looks kind of like her lower body is kind of detached from her upper body. There we go. Look at her hips. It's so ridiculous looking. Anyway. In the warm glow of candlelight, the Roivos... Or is it Roivos or Roivus? Roivus. Probably Roivus. The Roivus family tree hangs from the wall. Shadows flitter across its surface, obscuring the detail. If one looks closely, the family's secrets are revealed. Also part of the family tree is apparently a hanging dead body. That's, um... Interesting. Well, let's finish exploring the other room first. So we came from here. There is a map, by the way, somewhere here. Here it is. I think you can zoom in too, yeah. Not the most convenient thing to use though. Hopefully I won't need it. These books contain the history of the Roivus family. Genealogy, birth and death records, deeds and writs. The Roivus history is a troubled one. As Mediterranean immigrants, the early, the early Roivus were shunned by other settlers in North America. Suspected of witchcraft, the Roivus were convicted during the witch hunts, forcing them into hiding. As memories faded, the Roivus rebuilt their lives. Is that why the Roivus family was chosen? Perhaps they were witches. Oh, is there an examine back here? Ah, sorting through the books, Alex sees one that seems to be placed differently than all the others, as if drawing attention to itself. Curious, she examines it. Upon the inside cover, shaky handwriting shapes the numbers 333. Just like the clock. Hmm. What was that sound? <laughs> I guess I found a secret. I guess that's another hint to the 333 thing. Oh, does that happen every time I look at it? Cool. Sounds nice. I feel accomplished every time I do it. Any more things around the books? Nope. So unfortunately it looks like you can't control the camera, it's kind of like a, a fixed thing. It just moves around on its own to follow you. So I'm at the mercy of the camera. The books in this corner seem to focus on the supernatural. The writings of Poe, Lovecraft, the poetry of Blake, the art of Bosch, everything with a tie to ethereal horror or fantasy. It is all here, a reference library to the arcane. Was this Alex's grandfather's secret hobby? Ah, so it is their grandfather. A slight draft can be felt issuing from beneath the bookshelf, almost as though a vent or empty space is behind it. Ah. Secret door. Oh, I bet I can change the time, can't I? This looming grandfather clock seems to stand ominously in the corner, gazing on this empty room with an almost patriarchal air. Just the clock hands. 
Should Alex adjust the clock hands? No for now. Okay, so I guess if I set that to 333, it'll probably open the bookcase, is my guess. I can't read that note. I guess not. Mm -mm. Maybe I should just do it. Let's just do it. I'm here. Why not? Three. Oh, oh. Three. Three. There we go. Uh oh, cutscene. This is where the grandfather did the more arcane things, it seems. An aged page set inside a glass frame hangs on the wall. An insane scribbling covers the page, incomprehensible to Alex. Uh, perhaps if Alex had some kind of tome, it could be deciphered. This tome? A large leather-bound antique book rests upon the cluttered desk. Should Alex read the book? Sure. I had no knowledge of what was to come, nor did I care. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. As you read this, you will come to learn fear as I have. You too will come to understand, or you will perish. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil of our reality. To see those who dwell behind. My life now has purpose. For I have learned the frailty of flesh and bone. I was once a fool. Where is Quies Kandamest? Where is Konservondine? Facusatis aquae sumat, et animus eorum confirma. Pugna huis dia sit modo prima multarum, si ingeptum conficiamus. Quam primum, Centurio Augustus. Wallo res I would like to compliment you once more on your battle tactics. Our enemies did not have a chance. Do you believe that it really exists, Centurion? I do not doubt our Emperor's beliefs. Why did it suddenly switch to English? Orders. But if we are to retrieve the artifact, then we must be strong and patient. Am I about to play? Oh, I am. Okay, interesting. So we get to play through these uh, 
flashbacks or stories or whatever you want to call them. So yes, the uh, introduction did make it sound like this was a timeless sort of evil. It said something about time coming once again, so it sounds like it, this great evil resurfaces every once in a while, gets beaten back down by someone or something, then comes back again. The days on the floor is finely crafted, inlaid with gold and gems that Pius can't identify, or Pius. A strong linear design is situated in the middle and is equally unknown to the Roman soldier. A little bit better than a punch, I guess. A shaft descends towards the next lower level. A ladder is situated on one side of the shaft. Nowhere to go but down, I'm guessing? Oh, I think there's a... Oh yeah, there's a stamina system. You can't see any stamina bar or anything. But you do run out of stamina. If you keep running, you slow down, start to pant. Can't attack as much. Okay, before I go down, I think we should save. It's somewhere in here. Here we go. Okay. A ladder leads into the dank heart of the labyrinth. Danger lurks beneath. Yet Pius's courageous resolve does not buckle. Should Pius climb down the ladder? Yes. I get the feeling that's going to come to life. I get the feeling they're all going to come to life. Hmm. Yep. Knew it. What was that? The fire just spit? Ooh, nice combo. Is it? No, it's not dead. Uh oh. They just attack each other. Ooh. Oh, tutorial. Health meter. This meter represents life energy. Every time a character takes damage, the level will get lower. When it reaches zero, the character... The character... Will die. No! That, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So can I, like, kick them? Oh, it said finish him. There we go. Ugh. Get back some of my stamina. Okay. Yeah, I don't know anything about combat. I just know how to walk, run, and attack. So, like, if there's, like, a backstep or, like, a dodge, I don't know it. I can ready my- there's a control to ready my weapon like this, but I don't- it doesn't seem different. Maybe it's like a strong attack? I don't know what that is. What is this cube? A strange granite block lies on the floor. Pick it up. What was that sound effect? I didn't... My sound effect didn't feel appropriate to this location. <laughs> oh, hey! This 
one seems particularly large. I wonder if it's stronger or what? Let's try this like strong attack or whatever this is. Oh, oh, is that to aim? Like, aim for a specific body part? Can I? Oh, yeah, I can move it. Oh, whoa, look at that. Oh my god. That's so cool. Looks like it has different effects. Like, it lost its head, but it was still kind of alive, I think. And, huh. Neat. That's gonna be important. The combat system, I mean. Not the granite block. The granite block's also going to be important. I should probably save. I'm just gonna cut off all their heads, because that seems good. Yeah, that actually seems really effective. It seems like they attack. Like, they still attack, but they don't- they can't see anything, so they just kind of attack into the air. Oh, no, I meant to finish him. Crap. Well, I'll get back my stamina. There we go. And they disappeared. All right. Ooh. Let's see where else I can aim. So it looks like for these, there's the torso, and then the head, which isn't there anymore, and then the arms. Okay. Oh, that one just accidentally killed the other one. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Climb down, finish him. Okay, yeah, so cutting off their head doesn't kill them, but it makes it so they can't see, so they just stay in place and flail. Cutting off the arms makes it so that they can't attack, but again, also doesn't seem to kill them. Necessarily. So cutting off all their heads definitely seems like the way to go if you want to try to survive a room and you're being mobbed. Definitely don't try to kill them one by one. Cut off their head. Run. Cut off head. Run. It's kind of a neat combat system. I'm glad it's more than just attack. And that's it. Let's go down. I keep forgetting to save. Is there an enemy there or something? Hopefully not. Let's save. The darkness is coming. Can't save right now. Oh! Oh, I hear it. Can we save now? Yes. It's calling me. Bars across the door block Pius's exit from the room. Matches the things I picked up.
surprisingly many hits to kill them. Oh, look at that kill cam. Oh, my character's getting tired. Looks like that's the final one. Alright, let's put him in a place. This wall is prominently decorated with a strange lined symbol carved into the granite. Cut into the wall is a square hole lined with scratches as though something has been removed from it. Oh, I guess I gotta go into my inventory. Right, uh, blue one. Use it. I can open that barred door back there. Aha. Let's save again. Is that me? Pious, you must prove your worth by destroying this statue. Oh, that introduces me to the hold, hold down the right button to select which target to attack. Releasing slightly and then pressing again will cycle between multiple targets. Oh, that's how you switch targets, okay. Very different from, like, Dark Souls. Which, of course, it has to be, because you use the movement left and right and up and down to select different body parts rather than switching between targets. Okay. Makes sense. Attack the head, left, right, attack the arms. Okay. So I have to prove my worth by destroying the statue of myself. Is that just gonna, like, kill me or something? Okay. <laughs> that looks easy. What's that sound? Am 
might be my own character. No, that sounds like something snuffling, like heavy breathing. A button attached to a small pylon softly illuminates the room. A bizarre energy seems to radiate from it. Should Pius push the button? Yes. Oh, is this going to be a boss? I bet you it is. Save again. Oh, I can't? Ah, oh, I can't. Shaped like a delicate dome, a pale blue statuette floats gracefully above the pedestal. Should I claim this artifact? Huh, I'm guessing I can only claim one. But I have no idea what they do. Effigy resembling a warped angel shaped from dark green emerald. Strange sculpture resembling a red clawed worm mysteriously floats above the pedestal. I don't know which one to pick. I guess I'm just gonna pick blue because it's my favorite color. have passed since then, and I have learned much. All at once, I understood. The forces of the multiverse all made sense under the transcending power of Ulyoth. No mountain too high, no city too far. Face me, and you shall surely perish. Acquire the Tome of Eternal Darkness. It's a pretty interesting way to tell that story. It's much more interesting the way they did it compared to just, you know, some text and some narration. Which could have been okay, but it's an actual story that begins with a cutscene and then you get to actually play it. And it looks like you get to kind of choose how it goes with your choice at the very end. And then you write the story that you just looked at. It's kind of neat. I hope I haven't awoken evil just by reading that. So, can I read this now? Strangely, with the Tome of Eternal Darkness in her possession, Alex can read the page. It is a chapter page from the tome itself. Should Alex take the chapter page? I'm guessing that's going to unlock another thing that you play through. I'm going to leave that there for now. Let's look at the rest of the room. This gothic cathedral is silhouetted against a stark light. The image is vicious and devoid of subtlety. Every brushstroke echoes the spikes of the architecture, imbuing a violent feeling, as though the building itself is a, is a harsh imposition on reality. A grim picture indeed. This looks like some kind of mask. The face is serene in composure, with the faint hint of a smile tugging at the corners of the mouth and eyes closed in deep meditation. A painting of a jungle-shrouded building. Seems to be a temple in Asia, perhaps from Thailand or Cambodia. It's a bizarre drawing of a cyclopean city. It's immense architecture bathed in an unnatural fog. The detail is incredible. 
As Alex studies it, she can almost imagine the city's inhabitants. Oh, that's the sword, the gladius, that we just used. The ancient Roman weapon, a gladius, is on display above the fireplace mantle. Another token of eclectic junk. No, I don't think so. It's glowing and I can pick it up. It's not junk, it's a weapon. I'm assuming I can equip it. Equip. There we go. Alright. Oh, I must be fighting something soon then, right? If I actually have a sword. A diabolic drawing of a stack of human bodies. Each one cemented into place. What twisted psyche could have executed this drawing? Though disturbing, it is meticulously rendered down to the subtlest detail. The precious anatomy of fractured bones and the convolutions of spines and ribs entwine into a mesmerizing sight. Here's a stack of bodies as compared to a scale model of a person. A small shrine of candles. Their placement appears to be very deliberate, matching the etchings on the table and the wall's illustration. The candles are unlit. Well, if I find a way to, like, some matches so I could light them, maybe that would do something. Edward Royvis's study is filled with arcane knickknacks, mementos of yesteryear and other cultures. The odor of ancient texts is faintly noticeable under the peppering of dust that covers every surface, except one. The desk had been the center of activity and not a mote of dust is on it. Here Alex's grandfather had worked, perhaps even hours before the end. Alright, that leaves nothing but this. Let's take it. The Binding of the Corpse God 